Hey everybody, it is Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong. If you're new here, I would love to welcome you to my channel. I have quite a few new subscribers and I am so grateful to have you here. I'm gonna spend a few minutes this morning working in my trash journal. I showed it really quickly the other day and I should have uh, been more clear about what the base pages are. A lot of times when I have made trash journals in the past, they've been a little more colorful at the outset. Uh, so in other words, I was more picky about what I made the actual pages out of. This is just junk mail. So you can see like there is an envelope from, we get these value packs, which I mean, I, I guess everybody's on this mailing list uh, with coupons and things. We didn't ask for it, we just get it. There's a chip bag. This is a letter that comes every month from my credit union. This is one of the little coupon pages in the value pack. So you can see there are only four items in this signature. And I wanted to keep each signature really small so that I could put it under the sewing machine and sew it to this cover, which is a cookie box. So this is four by eight and then the spine is like two and a half. And I just took the, the box that had the oatmeal cookies and I cut one end completely out, then folded it right in the center. And then I thought, oh wait, I really, I should just let, let this be the whole spine. So you can kind of see a fold in there where I folded it to start with. So that gave me this two and a half inches on which to sew these signatures. So let's get back to the signatures and so there's part of a coffee bag. There is a soup label that is stuck a little bit. Another envelope from the mail, and then another coupon from the value pack. So again, that one's got four pieces. And you know what? Quite a bit of this, as you can see, is the envelopes. I thought it would be, it's gonna be really pretty when these end up getting distressed and stained. There's another part of a coffee bag. It looks like this was a flyer. It says heating and plumbing. Uh, so that probably was left in our mail. And how many we've got again, let's see. One, two, three, that one's got four. So I think you're getting an idea. Look, this one's just ripped across the top. Like I wasn't even careful about the way I opened that. And that one's got one, that one's got four. There's an insurance envelope. So you can see the box here and that's the space between the signatures. I do have videos on my channel showing how I sew these signatures in. A lot of times I'm using fabric strips with one, well, two pages on each strip, one page on each side. But you can use this method to do a lot of different things. Let's see, we've got one, two, three, four. It looks like there's a couple of pages in that one. That was a sale flyer from the local grocery store. So that's that's pretty much, you know, this is really showing you what's what's in here. It's it's truly, truly junk mail. And you know, I've made, you know how I make the art journals, or if you some of you do, those of you who are brand new might not have seen them, but I love to sew signatures in with sewing machines with sewing machines. I did used to have two. I had an antique one and I sold it. I just, it didn't do enough um, as far as what I wanted to have done. Sometimes I wish I had it back. I digress. But this is the first time that I've sewn in signatures that have multiple pages and use the sewing machine. And I do really, really like the way this turned out. Even though there's quite a bit in here, it will still lay pretty flat. And if something like that ever becomes an issue, I just take, you know, you can take clips. This is a junk journal, so don't, don't stress. Don't let something like this stress you out. Journaling is supposed to be fun. Crafting is supposed to be fun. Uh, this, we just did a, a little stamping on here and put that in. But I think to start out right away, I'm gonna take a couple of sheets of paper and protect some of this other stuff. You know, I might cover that bag too because it, that bag's just gonna repel any ink. And I'm gonna spray 
And what this spray is, this is water. And Tim Holtz ink meant to re-ink a stamp pad. So it's the vintage, I think this is vintage photo. I love to distress things. Now, sometimes I do big batches of tea stained paper and I put a little bit of baking soda sometimes to kind of make it pH neutral. I hang it out on the line or I dry it in the oven. And then sometimes I do a really quick page like this and I use my dryer. I have a spare dryer that I keep out here. I don't like to run this too much because this is electricity and I, you know, this is my full-time job working in my journals and art and I just want to keep the bills down as much as I can, but I still do use this sometimes. I love the way that crinkled around the paper clip. So if you don't know what to do with a trash journal, say you make one of these and then you just kind of freeze because you think, well, now I'm just limited to trash. You're not. That's one of the things about this that's so pretty. Trash, junk, things like that can be such an amazing backdrop to other things. I love this. I love this little image right here. And I'm gonna cut this out. It says, woman with tambourine, terracotta, that's in the Louvre. That's about 300 BC, it says. So here we have this little image cut out. I think it's, it's comical almost. It's very interesting to see the contrast between this sort of vintage, well, the, well, I guess the book is vintage too. This vintage image on top of some recent junk mail. And journals don't have to have a specific purpose. Like, you know, sometimes we journal for memory keeping and to keep, you know, pictures of our kids or our families or pets or just life, you know. At my age, I love to just document the days, little notes about my kids and grandkids. Um, if you're young and you have young children, you know, you might wanna keep track, print the pictures out from your, from your phones. Uh, when I was your age, we did not have cell phones. So I had to use a camera and in the very beginning, go get film developed. And then later on, of course, everything became digital. I think I got my first computer in about 1999. And then I got a really cool HP camera in the early 2000s. And so I would print, I would take my camera to Walmart, plug it in and print. I have thousands of pictures and my kids are so grateful. They tell me, I'm so glad you took pictures, mama. Some kids don't have this. So just remember when you've got all these digital things, it's also nice to have printed copies. But uh, the point that I'm making is that sometimes a journal is just, it's art just something to look at. It doesn't have to have a purpose, like a specific theme or to be, you know, pH perfect and memory keeping. But we're gonna add to this page. I happen to have this scrap piece of paper floating around on the desk. We all have that. And why don't we go ahead and make a pocket and glue that down so that can be drying. And I have found that I really like making tags that that fit perfectly the front inside cover where I can date the journal and write a little bit about what it's for and it, it's pretty but it's also very functional because it tells what the journal is about so let's put this down we'll let that dry and then you know we can even put things on the front we could put a pretty postage stamp which we're I'm sure we're gonna do. In fact, there's probably one floating around here somewhere. Look at this, right away I found this beautiful stamp with birds because I was going through some stamps yesterday. So let's put that there. And you know I love to take these stamps with the little postage, postage mark. 
some of these stamps are getting a little bit I think I've used alcohol ink on these before, and that really dries like permanent, permanent. I need to um, either clean these or maybe invest in a new one. I have two of these, and I can't find one of them at the moment. I don't know where it is. So I think, yeah, that's, that's drying. So let's leave that for right now. And the one other thing I might do with this, just to go ahead and complete this idea, Here's a dictionary page that has just a couple of images that I wanted to keep, namely the bear, because I'm going to put that in my bear journal or book or whatever. But what if we wanted to, you know, let's put this little bird down here, like maybe she's looking at a bird, and I'm going to go ahead and tear that down really small. Let's give her this bird. To look at. And then the last thing, so if this page, oh that's really bright. <laughs> look, look how bright that is. So if, if the page needs something else, there are all sorts of ways to add color. You can take gelatos, you can use acrylic paint, you can use different inks. I like to come to the center of the book, too, sometimes and add some color. And in fact, okay, so let's just frame her. Let's just go all the way around with this bright color. So that's really just fun. That's what this is. This is about having fun. It serves several purposes. One is relaxation. Two is using trash in a way that keeps it out of the landfill. Re, it's reuse and repurpose. Three is helping you to find things that you like. Maybe you're developing your style. This could be a big help with that. And, you know, you're just going to have something pretty to put on a shelf. I've never yet had anybody that I know, like in my circle of friends, to see these and not say, oh, that is so cool. So something like this can be a conversation piece. They're really pretty when they're finished, and you can just, you know, put it on a table or a shelf where people can, can see it and enjoy it. Just something to look at. Okay, so I'm going to stop for now. We will definitely come back and add a tag here. And we're going to keep working our way through and come up with a lot of ideas for this trash journal. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back really soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye for now.